It's Anthony Spateria, Senior Global Technologist uh, in the Product Strategy Team at Veeam. And with me today, who will also be presenting, is Michael Cade and David Hill. So again, first, thank you very much, uh, Stephen, for letting us be here for Cloud Field Day 8. Um, for the delegates, uh, hopefully, you know, it's interactive for you. Hopefully, ask some questions along the way. Um, and for the people that are seeing this over the stream, hopefully we can show you exactly what Veeam is doing in the cloud space. So let's just go over the quick agenda for the next couple of hours. So first, I'm going to give a very, very quick corporate update and platform vision. Very, very quick. I promise you we won't spend too much time doing that. Um, secondly, we're going to have David talk about Veeam Backup for AWS and Microsoft Azure. We're then going to have Michael come in and talk about Veeam Backup for Office 365. And I'm going to finish up um, talking about um, something which probably we haven't shown too much, the Veeam Service Provider Console, and a few other tidbits around our Veeam Cloud Service Providers. So, and then David will come in and just close out a little bit there. So let's kick in straight away. I'm going to go and talk about the corporate update and platform vision. So just wanted to kick things off. For those that haven't probably heard about Veeam for a while. Um, we actually got acquired earlier this year. It seems like a long time ago now. 2020 has been quite interesting and it certainly kicked off with a bit of a bang for us at Veeam as Insight Partners announced the intention to acquire Veeam in January for um, $5 billion. So, you know, that, that's a very interesting play. Um, that transaction closed uh, towards the end of February, early March. And what that means effectively for Veeam is it gives us a lot of runway um, and a lot of power to execute on what we're calling Act 2. You know, the first 10 to 12 years of the company was great. We built up a great company, Ratmir and, and the founders did an amazing job for us. Um, as we transition over to Insight, we become a US owned and um, headquartered company, which is also important moving forward. But suffice to say, this puts us in a great spot moving forward to execute. And I think some of the technologies that you'll see us talk about today are testament to where we're going as a company. In terms of where we've been, um, a quick corporate overview. It's, you know, I don't spend too much time here, but I think the thing that really I want to point out is last year we did become one of those magical software only companies that passed the billion dollar um, in bookings uh, mark. So that's something that we're very proud of. Not too many companies um, have achieved that from a software only perspective. We're in some really sort of rare air there. So we're very proud of that fact. Um, I think the other highlights to kind of look at on this screen is the fact that we are now in over 160 companies and have 4,200 employees globally. So as a company, we're not only growing in bookings, but we're also growing in our employees. I think when I joined the company, there was around about 2,000 people, uh, and that was less, a little less than four years ago. So the growth has been quite impressive and steady from that point forward. Um, customers also continue to grow. We, we you know, say 375,000, we still are putting on about 4,000 per month. So uh, customer acquisition is still something that we are continuing to grow and accelerate through. This is um, something that we wanted to talk a little bit about. This is quite recent in terms of data, what you're seeing here. Gartner, uh, the backup and recovery software market share for, you know, basically CY 2019. And we are very proud to say that we have shifted into third place overall um, in the market. And, you know, as you can see, the market is, is very fragmented, um, you know, by nature. It, it is a fragmented market. However, you know, to command 14.2% and, and be third um, as we've grown, we're very, very proud of this fact. So, you know, a little feather in our cap and something that we are quite proud of there from a software perspective. In terms of vision, um, we've talked about this for a while. We've talked about being the most trusted provider of backup solutions that deliver cloud data management. And again, it's very important to sort of say that this, this is a vision. This is where we, we want to be as a company. Um, and as you can see, we've bolded the uh, backup and we've bolded cloud data management. We're very, very big on the fact that we are a backup company moving into this new sort of phase of cloud data management in itself. Um, and what does cloud data management mean? It's, it's a very broad term, um, but this is kind of how we see it. And we see it as the fact that the data being your data, being customer's data, partner data, is all basically your data. Um, 
very important there to understand that we do not lock you in. We are not someone who's going to take the data, put it in a proprietary format and keep it under lock and key. We're very, very big on the fact that the data that you guys generate, the data that you guys consume, the data that you guys store is always going to be your data. When we look at where that data is being generated, we understand now that we're living in a multi-cloud world, multi-cloud hybrid cloud world. So data is being generated and created in different places more than ever, right? The data is being disrupted. We're looking at this displacement, especially today when we have the situation like we're all presenting here, we're all presenting, you know, remotely, the delegates are sitting in their home office. Um, and what we're seeing here is the fact that we're getting data created not only in private clouds, more traditional on-premises locations, uh, data centers, into the public clouds, the hyperscalers, but also at home. Everyone's creating data at home. We're doing that right now by being on Zoom, creating this video content. And then as we go around the circle, we look at backup and recovery. And it's very important again to highlight that we are very much focused on thinking about backup first. You know, um, there's a lot of marketing terms that can be thrown around um, with regards to how the backup and data management industry, you know, looks at itself. But we really are very much focused on that backup. If you don't do backup and recovery right um, in a reliable way, you might as well not be in this game. And I think, you know, with retrospect, that is why you see us shifting into the number three uh, space in, in this uh, particular foundation. Governments and compliance, it's very important. Obviously, you know, we've been talking about that for a few years now um, with regards to GDPR that really put it in the limelight. You know, we're offering tools to be able to, to manage um, the governance and, and, and compliance that is part of everyone's business when they're operating um, a data center, an IT organization. One that's very close to my heart, very close to Michael's heart and the product strategy team is orchestration and automation. That is really giving our customers and partners the ability to do repeatable actions with our platform. Okay, you know, PowerShell, leveraging infrastructure as code. Uh, Michael, myself, David, we're gonna talk a little bit about that as we move through this presentation. And then monitoring and analytics, very important here to understand that once you've created the data, once you've saved it, um, once you've done the backup, you wanna know about it. You wanna know where it is, what it's doing, how you're consuming it and what it actually contains. And we certainly have a suite that can work on that. And then finally, cloud mobility. This is something, you know, that I think you'll hear resonating with us um, over the next couple of hours when we talk about the products that we're going to talk about here. Um, really at the heart of it, what we're talking about here is the fact, again, going back to the fact that your data is your data. When you put the backup data into a Veeam backup repository, it then becomes mobile, okay? When we talk about that, we mean that through our portable data format, which is self-describing. It's like a zip file. You can access it all the time, any place. We offer free tools to be able to basically access that data effectively forever. But once it gets into that format, you can then recover it. If, say, if it was a VMware backup, you can then recover that data into Azure. You can back it up and recover it into Hyper-V, um, onto AHV, Nutanix. We don't really mind as long as you get that data into the format. That's what we talk about when we're talking about cloud mobility. Simple, flexible, reliable. You've seen us talk about this before, and this is the core of, of, you know, of Veeam. This is what made Veeam such a great company to start with. The fact that it was a simple product at, at the start still is very simple. You can still install the core Veeam backup and replication platform within seven clicks and be backing up uh, within 20 or 30 minutes, software only. That, that's, that's a key there. And that adds to its flexibility. The fact that we're hardware agnostic, software defined. Um, that is always going to be a very key point, and I'll point that out a little bit um, in the next slide as well when we talk about the platform as a whole. Um, a very scalable architecture. Make no mistake, this is a very, very scalable architecture where you can start small and grow as you see fit. Um, we've seen, and, and the greatest example is, you know, we've got instances of Veeam backup replication running in our home labs. It's the very same code, the very same software that runs in our, in our enterprises and our top service provider, back, you, know, you know, backing up thousands and thousands of, of machines and hundreds of servers. So very, very scalable architecture. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that um, over the next couple of hours as it pertains to the products that we're going to feature. And then reliable. This is hugely important. Um, and one of the reasons why I think we are successful and why we've got this, this tremendous customer base. We use the term, it just works um, quite a bit. We've used that for years. 
uh, but the reliability is driven from that. Um, there's a stat that we have from our internal um, support organization that when we release a major version, uh, 60 to 70% of our customer base update within the first three months, um, which is you know fairly unheard of in this industry and shows a level of trust from our customer base, um, which is also backed by a strong support organization as well. Just to finish off, um, I wanna talk about Veeam as a platform. This is a single platform now. And, yeah, we've been talking about the Veeam platform now for a number of years, but this is really now an ecosystem approach to our products and our portfolio. Backup and replication is still core to everything that we do. However, you know, we've, we've built a lot of orchestration, we've built monitoring and analytics to cover and protect workloads as you see above, cloud, um, software as a service, virtual and physical. Um, importantly though, I think the thing that underpins everything is our universal storage APIs, which again, you know, leads into that agnosticity that I was talking about with regards to our storage partners. Um, the storage partners plug in using that storage API, which gives our customers and partners flexibility of choice. And that also now extends um, very much so to object storage, um, which we have talked about at previous um, cloud and tech field days as well in terms of the capabilities that we have there. Very quickly, we've been busy. Um, 2020 so far, this is actually what we've delivered in terms of GA um, up to actually yesterday. So, you know, we delivered our flagship Veeam Availability Suite V10. Uh, that was done um, on the 18th of February with a launch event. Uh, since then, we've released updates to our backup for Nutanix AHV. We've released updates to the Veeam Service Provider Console, which I'm gonna to touch on a little bit later on. Our Veeam Availability Orchestrator V3 actually went live yesterday. So we're very proud to get that out, which is our orchestration tool. And then um, the Veeam backup for Azure and AWS had releases, as well as some agent releases. And a product that you know still does very well for us, but probably doesn't get talked about a lot, is our management pack. So you can see that we've been very, very busy, and it's a credit to our R&D team to be able to push out this many releases in you know 2020 so far. In terms of a very, very quick roadmap, uh, this is something that we're looking at in the next uh, six or so months. So we're about to release a fairly major update of V10, which is a 10A release. It's actually gonna have something called a Veeam platform service, which David is gonna talk about a little bit later on. Um, we're gonna be incrementing pretty quickly on a, on a very regular cadence with regards to our Veeam backup for AWS and Azure. We're gonna introduce a new version of backup for Office 365 version five, which Michael's gonna talk about. And then, uh, you know, the flagship product, which we just announced with some great features, uh, V11, that is on our roadmap as well. So that is what's coming from Veeam over the next six or so months. So now just to lead into the rest of the presentation, you saw the platform slide. Now, what we are gonna do over the next couple of hours is focus on the top level there. Focus on cloud, SaaS, virtual and physical. And this is important because what we wanted to do here was highlight the fact that Veeam is more than just backup and replication nowadays. We've got this suite of products that's grown significantly over the past three or so years, um, especially if we look at in terms of how we've grown the products that we've released. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the capabilities that look to protect the workloads that you see in this particular slide.